copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Welcome to the police, Colonel Oil Cars, Attention Oil Cars, broadcast 101, regarding a murder at 11th and Maple. That's all. Roll and search. <laughs> Every police car that speeds past you, the siren screeches, and the dramatic advertisement for Rio Grande cracks gasoline. So is every police ambulance speeding on its errand of murder. Every fire engine that roars past. Every police motorcycle that patrols the road. There are thousands of such emergency cars in the territory where Rio Grande cracks gasoline is sold. And more of them use Rio Grande cracks than any other gasoline. What greater proof can you ask? But this gasoline is spared all others. The gasoline selected for emergency cars operated by the cities of Los Angeles, Oakland, Berkeley, and others, and by the county of San Diego, Maricopa County, Arizona, and many, many others, is chosen in competitive press. Rio Grande has won these press because it is the only gasoline available in the far west that is made by the patented Sinclair cracking process, the most advanced refining method known to the petroleum industry. In Rio Grande's new cracking plant, the finest in America, your gasoline goes through a costly extra process that changes all the weak, slow-burning, lazy units into rich, vital elements. And when you buy Rio Grande cracked gasoline from your neighborhood independent dealer, you get the same gasoline that is used by more emergency engines than any other brand. And in addition, Rio Grande offers free gifts to every boy and girl. Drive in tonight, or tomorrow sure. Wherever Rio Grande cracked gasoline is sold, ask for your free copy of the Calling All Cars News and read how your youngsters may have a complete junior detective outfit free of charge. And now it is our pleasure to present Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. As you sit quietly back in your chair, listening to this broadcast, perhaps you will believe it is incredible that several persons can conspire together to commit crime which may result, and in this case did result, in cold-blooded murder. Few citizens realize that walking abroad in our community are vicious individuals whose criminal tendencies are so great that they can conspire together in a single act of violence. But this story we bring you tonight is one which proves conclusively that definite criminal types are dangerous and altogether unfit to associate with civilized society as we know it. I wish to call particular attention to those listening in tonight to the splendid work done by the police officers in ringing from the group of conspirators and would-be murderers whose story this is, the truth concerning one of the most barbaric killings in police annals. This splendid piece of detective work was done without resorting to the antiquated so-called third degree. The psychology used by the police officers in this story to break down the resistance of these clever criminals is particularly noteworthy. Now for the story. <laughs> Sure, it is that, Mrs. Mudd. And what brings you out so early? There ain't a bite of food in the house, and the kids are hungry. I've got to go down to the relief headquarters and see if I can get them something to eat. Oh, and it's a fine state the world in when gentle folk like us has to be begging the government itself for a crust of bread. Well, I don't know what the world's coming to. I was just saying to Mrs. Watson the other day. Oh, and Mrs. Watson, you were speaking. Then maybe you can tell me where our fine landlady has been taking herself. And me with a plumbing in this house gone bad and not able to find hide nor hair of her these three days. No, that's strange. I haven't seen her for several days myself. I'm just on my way to her apartment to find out where I can't get me some service in this place. Will you come along? Mm, very well. I want to speak to her myself. You don't suppose she's run off and got herself married to that Mr. Redding from across the street, do you? Oh, no. She's too old and settled for that. When a woman's past 60, she isn't thinking about flighty things. Oh, maybe not. 
Of course. <laughs> I ain't past 60. <laughs> I ain't well into my 40s yet. But that Mr. Redding don't look so bad to me. He'd be a fine husband for a widow woman who understood him and could do for him like I could, if you get what I mean. Yes, Mr. McManus, you surprise me. Well, I'm only human after all. And I never could understand what Mr. Redding sees in that old Mrs. Watson. You hear you? Oh, not hard, she won't. She was deaf as the devil himself is with it. Knock on the door, Mrs. Mudd. Ah, not loud enough to raise the dead. Surely she ought to hear that. She ought if she wants to. Hey, do you suppose she... Of course not. I'm going to peek through the keyhole. Oh, well, I wouldn't do that, Mrs. McMahon, if it ain't polite. No, what of it? No plumbing needs fixing, and I'm going to tell her about it no matter how I do it. Now, uh, just nail down here. Oh, Jones is plaguing me again. Do you see anything? Mrs. Mudd. Mrs. Mudd? Yes, what is it? The room's a wreck. If the devil himself has been up to sleep, then you see what's the matter. Not me. Not me. That's enough. Mrs. Mudd. Oh, it's good, it's going to be. It didn't take you long to get here. Oh, I guess we got the call as quickly as you did. What does it look like? Murder. As you see, the old lady was beaten with a blood instrument, bound and gagged and rolled in the blanket. Well, mm-hmm. oh, clear out these people, fellas. Let's clear out now and go over the place. Yes, sir. All right, folks. You all have to get outside. Tell us. Yes, sir. Then for all the band, the thing is in man, tell the coroner to come out for the body. Right away, sir. Mm-hmm. All right, folks. Everyone outside. Come on, Oh, uh, nice job, huh? Right. Obviously, the motive was robbery. The way this place has been torn apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. This is hunting for something in particular. Hey, look here. What? There's a nice thing on the bedside. Well, him told the man to take care of that when he gets here. And now we better round up these neighbors and find out what they know about the attack. Well, as far as I know, Mrs. Watson had a little money, and she always wore a big diamond ring. I warned her not to do that. <laughs> I heard a woman scream last eight o'clock on the night of the 27th. When we arrived, Lieutenant, the door was bolted from the inside. The rear door had been locked by a string lock. Looks like a murderer escaped the back way. Well, I saw a man coming out of the rear in Mrs. Watson's house at about 8.15 on the night of the 27th. I didn't get a very good look at him. Well, that's the way it was. 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 He probably killed her for her money and her ring. Well, yes, she would come in and pass to us, and I hope she could help to solve Mrs. Watson's murder, Mr. Redding. I would be glad to help him any way I can. Thank you. How long have you known Mrs. Watson, Mr. Redding? We're several years. Oh, well, we were good friends. When did you see her last? I haven't seen her for a week. Have you any idea who killed her? Uh, no. Did you kill her? Did you have any enemies? No, not that I know of. Thanks, Elder Byrne. Yeah. Well, according to this report, the thing that we took and we brought you in, tell her the print found in Mrs. Watson's bed. How about that, Mr. Elder? It well, can't be so. I've never been near Mrs. Watson's bed. Why, I haven't even seen her for a week, I tell you. Well, that's very bad, Mr. Elder. I don't have to tell us the truth and ease your conscience. I have no anything else to tell. I've told you the truth. I understand it, Mr. Elder. How did that happen? Why, I cut it with some plumbing at my house. Cut it with some plumbing, huh? So you didn't hurt it while you were beating out Mrs. Watson's bones? No, no, I see why I'm in a snow. I haven't done anything. Well, that's a lot of you because of that. Why, what are you going to do to me? Are you going to hold you in technical custody? And so we'll check your story. Oaks mm-hmm. and Joe Hart stepped back on Redding's story, found that he was telling the truth, that he had indeed cut his hand while he was telling the plumbing, and soon bring him once more to their office. Well, Mr. Redding, you stepped back on your story and you found that you told us the truth about your hand. Why, of course, I mean some time. I don't know you. However, that doesn't explain about your fingerprint on Mrs. Watson's bedstead. Well, I was frightened when you first questioned me. I, I should have admitted that I had been in Mrs. Watson's room. I could have read a book about a couple of days before she was... before she died. 
And they were packed to bits. What a world is that in the first place? Yes, but you see. I had Mr. Redding here convinced you had nothing to do with her murder. And I'm free to go. Yes, yeah, you can go now. Well, good day, Mr. Redding. Good day. Good day. Well, that was only three out the door. You look too well, well, you look too well, guys. Yeah, but he isn't in New York. That guy's on the left. Yeah. Right. So perhaps you can tell me what we do next. All right. What did you suggest? Pass the buck to me. What would you suggest? Hey, we got a murder, and that's a single suspect we haven't eliminated. Well, sometimes it's nice to be Mr. McCarthy. Huh? What do you mean? Let's just wait for something to turn up. For the next several days, Hope and Joe Hart concerned themselves with the routine details of the case, checking the stories of the of the victim, going over their data for some little fact that may prove to be an important clue, actually getting nowhere. And then from a quite unexpected source, a great comes which opens the case wide. Homicide, Hope speaking. Deputy Sheriff Ellen, Yeah? You would be able to remember what's in the Yes. Yeah. And I just ran into something that might have a bearing on that. What is it? A friend that comes around our house told my wife that he knew a man who'd been over from Stowe, Robin Old Lady. Yeah? Yeah. Of course, it may not have anything to do with your case, but I thought you might want to know. You're done that, you do. I'll get on that right away. Running down Deputy Sheriff Allen Swift, the detective interview Mrs. Allen Swift. Interview is a minstrel, a peddler, and finally through him comes Captain Old and the moment, very drunken gentleman. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. But what can I do for you? If you'd like to have a talk with you, if you don't know. Oh, not at all. Where will you be coming in and help to get a seat? Thanks. Uh, no, sir. What is it, gentlemen? My name's Harris. Mr. Lewis. This is Lieutenant Gerhardt from the police department. Oh, the police department. I'm sure it's no time to have a taste of liquor in the house, is it? You're not interested in that, Mr. Lewis. I don't think I caught the name. Uh, McNulty. Uh, uh, Tim McNulty. Uh, uh, and what is it you want to be talking to me about? I want your help, Mr. McNulty. Uh, me, me help is it? And how can a poor innocent law-abiding citizen be helping the police? According to the information you received, you offered some money to help rob an old woman. Oh, uh, I never heard of that today, my sister. I never did. All right, all right, McNulty. Now calm down. Uh, uh, would, you, would you like a little... Uh, Drop of whiskey, gentlemen. No, thanks. Yes. You, you won't be minding me. I know we did. You, you jolted me, sir, when you made that last remark. Oh, go ahead of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that, that's better. How about it, Miss Nellis? How about what? This job you offered. Then I don't know nothing. I, I never heard of it. By the holy things, I swear it. Sounds to me as if you're trying to hide something. Hide something, is it? My conscience is as clear as a newborn baby. The thing gets them swaddled in the clothes of the teeth. We know that you offered a job to help rob an old woman. Yeah. You continue to deny it. We may be forced to arrest you on suspicion of murder. Murder? <laughs> Did you kill the poor old lady? I'm making on the Oh, you did know about it. Yes, I know nothing. Just sorry I am that the poor old lady met her death at the hands of robbers. They begin the devil's own pardon. According to Lizzie Minsky, you know a great deal about it. Lizzie Minsky. Him and I have treated like a friend, like a brother Going about the town, brave and scandal about me. Right? You want to talk? I'll talk, didn't I? Tell you, I'm on saying all the truth I know. Well, Harry, I guess we'll have to run him in. Yeah, I guess so. You want to use your handcuffs until I use mine? Well, it doesn't matter. Oh, wait a minute, gentlemen. I'm not that's what he's asking. You wouldn't want to be arrested an innocent man. Of course not. But how do we know that you are innocent? That's to me as though you're trying to cover something up. No, 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 but there. Uh, but there. Uh, I am after forgetting something. I wonder a month or so past. What was it? Uh, oh, yes, it, I remember now. It, it seems that the, that the fella did talk to me about robbing some poor old lady. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't have nothing to do with it. I told him I was a respectable, self-respecting, respectable citizen. And Who was this man? Well, now, let me think. Seems like his name was uh, Eddie Black. Eddie Black. Yeah. Where's he live? Yeah. I believe it's somewhere around Pico in San Pedro. But, uh, but then I ain't sure. I, I never had nothing to do with him. I sent him and his illicit proposition. 
I fed him like the black one I did. Sure and why could that self-respecting, respectable, self-respecting, taxpayer citizen like me have any truck with a black-hearted devil like the one in his himself? So, good evening, please. Honorable gentlemen looking for register in number one Japanese hotel? No, we're looking for someone. Oh, who are you looking for, please? Hello, by the name of Eddie Black, who lives here. Oh, yes. Eddie Block, I buy it. Eddie Block, I buy it. Eddie Block, I buy it. Eddie Block. I think that room is in. Oh, I think that room is in. Oh, Eddie Block is not in now. What is coming? Oh, look. There are Eddie Block making entry from doorway right now. Yeah? Just a minute, Mr. Black. Yeah, what is it? I want to have a little talk with you. About what? A murder. That's in police headquarters. A murder? Well, I don't know nothing about no murder. Well, that's just fine. And you won't mind coming along with us. We want you to meet a friend of ours. Yeah, well, I'm clean. I don't know nothing. Well, we're glad to hear that. Come along. Car's waiting outside. Come on. Get out. Hey, what's the idea? Where are you taking me? You'll see soon enough. Taking you to visit an old friend of yours. Yeah, well, I don't know anybody out in the center town. Well, we'll see about that. You didn't come very long, and I see you got your man. Hello, Eddie, and how are you tonight? Hey, who is this drunken old fool? Come on, come on, come on. No, no, sit down. It's the man, is it, Miss Melvin? Oh, then it is, and the devil will take the black heart of him. Hey, what kind of a frame of this is? Shut up and listen. Go ahead, Jim, and tell Black here what you told us an hour ago. Oh, I'll be glad to. And listen to me, Eddie, my bucko. If you can hang a word of what I say, then you're a duck. I look here, you can't help Black. All right, Jim. All right, Jim. This is the which one. This exclusive man sitting there met me on the street about a month ago. He says to me, Tim, my boy, says he, how would you like to make a little change? And I says to him, says I, Eddie, I need a little change for the man. And he says, all right, my lad, you're on. Wait a minute, Eddie, says I, what do I have to do for the money? Crafty like he looks at me and says, says he, just help me rob an old lady that time. I pull myself up. I fled from him like he was all the powers of darkness. Seeing as how I'm a respectable, self and respectable citizen and taxpayer. And I swear to it on the holy book. You know, that only I, I, I sold me by way of money for him. He a medicine that can pass a cold. Well, Black, how about it? Oh, he's drunk. Drunk? I'll be asked to break in every bone in the body. You talk to me like that. Drunk or not, he'll tell the same story on the witness stand. Oh, and that I will. How about it, Black? Did you murder Mrs. Watson? No. I swear I didn't. Oh. Who did? What McNulty just said is the truth, isn't it? Yes. Okay, it's the truth. I'm in a jam, I guess. But if you get me out of this spot, I'll show you the guy that bumped her off. Come on, let's go. Drunk, said he. A mere respectable self That's the woman, how she lives in right there at the corner. What's his name? Well, I don't want to tell you that. I know what room he's in. All right, what room is it? Number 15. That's fine. Let's get Black into headquarters there. Okay. Hey, what's the idea? You can't hold me. No. Well, they're holding you as a material witness until we check your story. Well, Lord, what do I look in these old clothes? I'm as filthy as I look in this. I always hate to work in phony disguises like this, and you know, sometimes you better. You better stick in this neighborhood. Everybody for blocks to know where it's just. Well, there we are the rooming house, Blake pointed out. Let's ask the landlady. Okay. Yeah. There's a room there at the left. Yeah? I want to rent a room. Yeah? Yeah. You'll we'll have to pay in advance. Okay, we will. Well, it looks to me like you had ten cents between you. No, we have. See this bed? The police. Right. And we want your assistance. Well, oh, now, look here. I don't want no trouble here. This is a respectable place, and I don't want it just in a bad name. All right, now, quiet down. 
If you're smart, nobody will know we're here. If you make a fuss, you have to raid the place to get our men. Oh, heaven, no. No way. Very well, then. Be quiet, and we'll cause you no trouble. Oh, what do you want? You want the name of the man in room 15. Mr. Jefferson has that room. Is he in now? No, he went out half an hour ago. When do you expect he'll be back? Well, as hard as hell. Sometimes he's away for a couple of days, and sometimes for just a few minutes. Have you got any rooms vacant next to him? No, but there's an empty room across the hall. We'll take it. But I don't want no trouble. As long as there won't be any trouble. Just you keep your mouth shut. The only way there'll be any trouble is if you tip them off that we're here. For 24 long hours, the two detectives sit in the little room, smoking endless cigarettes, taking turns, watching through the keyhole for anyone ever in Jefferson's room across the hall. No one comes that afternoon, that night, nor the next morning, but finally at noon on the second day. Come, come on. Yeah, probably that old chicken down the hall. He's walking around all night. Come on, let's take him. Take him up, Jefferson. What is up high? Fishing, Harry. Say, who are you, guys? What is this, a heist? No, an arrest. We're police officers. An arrest? What for? I ain't done nothing. What's the big idea? There's a friend of yours down at headquarters that wants to see you. Come on. I don't think I need to introduce you two. You haven't made a mistake. This is your old friend Jefferson, isn't it, Black? Yeah, that's the guy. What is this, a frame-up? I never saw this mug in my life before. Oh, huh? sit down, Black. Tell Mr. Jefferson here what you told me up in the cell. Well, there was four of us in the deal. Jefferson here, me, Bud Sampson, and Betty Martin. He was planning to rob an old woman who lived next door to Betty's room, and that joint over on Maple Street. I kind of Betty said she had five grand hidden in her trunk. He was going to use tire patches on our fingers to hard print. We had a car. <laughs> Betty Martin? Yeah, what of it? You're under arrest. What for? The station of murder. Come right in, Samson. Hey, what's the big idea? You've got no right in my room. That's the police headquarters. You come along quietly or do I have to use force? First, this is no time in hurting the suspect into the office of the superior Captain Bert Wallace of the Homicide Squad. Captain Wallace is Reddy Black, Bud Samson, Jack Jefferson, and Betty Martin. How are you? Sit down, folks. Now, I suppose you'd like to know why you're all here. You're darn certain we would. Yeah. There's a law against false arrest, you know. Yes, I've heard of that law. That's the reason we never make an arrest until we are reasonably sure the suspect's guilt. Now, you're way out of line this time. I don't think so. Well, come on. Fill it, Cap. What's it all about? A little over a week ago, an old lady by the name of Amanda Watson was murdered during a robbery. We have some strong reasons to believe that one of the people in this room committed that murder. How about it? Okay. I'll lay my cards on the table. I'll start talking. That's fine. You don't mind if we take down your statement in shorthand, do you? <laughs> Not a good to do me if I didn't. Perhaps you're right. You ready to take the statement, sir? Yes, yes, sir. All right, Jensen. Start talking. Well, I was working on a construction job out in Hollywood a couple of months ago, and I met Black there. He was working the same job, and he drove me back to town a couple of times, and then one day when we was talking about how tough things was and how hard it is to get a job or to live on relief, he said he knew where there was some ready cash. Mm-hmm. He told me that he knew a woman who knew about an old lady that kept five grand and a lot of jewelry in a trunk in her room. It sounded pretty good to me, so Black took me around to make this game. And who was this woman? Betty Martin here. You rat, you double Now, Betty, you don't, don't be that way. This is the best way out. I, I didn't bump the old woman, and you didn't need her. I don't like informers. Well, Samson, what else? Well, this old lady lived next to uh, Betty's apartment. We met in there and talked about it and decided we'd need a screwdriver to force open the trunks and things, and we'd need some strong wire to tie up Ms. Watson. We never meant to bump her off. But you did. Um, no, sir, I didn't. Well, we... We finally decided that maybe there wasn't any dough in the room because we'd been watching through the keyhole. At least I decided it was a bum steer, and I pulled out of the whole thing. That's all I got to say. How about that, Black? You stand from telling the truth? Yeah. What have you got to add? Well, not much. That's why I talked to Samson about the job. I ran into Jefferson oh, here. Sit down, sit down, Jefferson. Go ahead, Black. Well, we'd known each other in Oklahoma, and when Jefferson told me he was out of work, I figured seeing he was an old friend that cut him in on a good thing. 
He went along with me to Betty's room, and he was pleasant when we talked over plans. Jefferson got the tire tool and the patches for our fingers. And then we started to argue about whether Mrs. Watson really did have any money. I was sick in bed with the flu, and the next thing I knew, I read in the papers that the old dame had been bumped. I didn't do it. I was never near than Betty Martin's apartment. How about it, Miss Martin? What have you got to add? Just this. I say it's a lie, a deliberate frame-up by a couple of double-talking rats that ain't fit to spit on. And what's my... For two days, the questioning goes on. Relentlessly, the officers seek to break down the stories, the admissions and denials of the suspects. Toward the end of the second day of questioning. Well, I'm getting a little tired of this murder on. So are we. Why don't you let us go? We ain't killed him. You know, boys, I think Jefferson's right. We're holding these people for no purpose. Certainly, I am convinced that Jefferson's innocent. Huh? And Jefferson's innocent. Huh? And you're right at that, Cap. And Jefferson, I want to apologize to you for keeping you here these two days. Oh, that's all right, Captain Wallace. We have to do these things sometimes to assure ourselves of the innocence of a suspect. Sure, I understand. Uh, you say, on it? Sure. Put it there. Oh, oh. What's the matter? You hurt my hand. That's just what I meant to do. Now sit down there, Jefferson, and start coming clean. For two days, you've been sitting here stretching your right cheek until you've sucked all the skin away. You're nervous, Jefferson. You're holding something back. And something else which has escaped the notice of the rest of my fellow officers here is that right hand of yours. It's so swollen. How did you hurt your hand, Jefferson? Why? Now don't tell us you were fixing the plumbing. We've already eliminated one suspect on that story. Come clean, Jefferson. Thompson, Black, and Miss Martin have convinced me that they are innocent of the actual murder. And you have convinced me by your nervousness that you have guilty knowledge of it. Jefferson, you killed Mrs. Watson. Isn't that the truth? Okay. You got me. I did it. Start talking. I got tired of them sitting around doing nothing. So that day I got crushed on a pint of cheap gin. And I took the tire tool and went over to Mrs. Watson. When she came to the door, I banged her over the head. And then I tied her up and threw her on the bed. And then I took the joint like Grant took Richmond. Did you find anything? No, not a dime. I'm hardly very Jefferson. Jefferson. There's just one thing I want you folks to know. I never make it, sir. I just wanted to put her to sleep so I could get the five grand the Martin Dan kid was here. I didn't mean to kill her. I swear I didn't. I just kept her easy. You just don't know your own strength, do you, Jefferson? Jefferson, Black, and Miss Martin were booked for murder. Samson was held as a material witness, and complaints were issued by Deputy District Attorney Vern Ferguson on one count of murder, two counts of conspiracy to commit robbery, and three counts of attempted robbery. But four days before the case came to trial, Judge Reuben Smith released Black and Miss Martin, declaring that the evidence of their guilt was insufficient. Jefferson went on trial on an insanity charge, was found sane, and was sent to San Quentin Penitentiary for life. Thank you, Chief Davis. Someday, you may need help from the police. Someday, you may need an ambulance, quick. Every second count when you need help. So police take no chances with gasoline refined by ordinary methods. Gasoline which may sputter and balk and stall at a sudden demand for speed. To ensure that every police car can jump from a crawl to top speed in emergency, the largest cities and counties in California and Arizona specify Rio Grande cracked gasoline to power all emergency motors. It costs no more to get such a heated gasoline refined by this extra cracking process. And with cracked gasoline in your car, you can get police car performance too. And as an extra inducement to try the super refined gasoline, every independent dealer handling Rio Grande cracked gasoline is offering free valuable gifts to boys and girls. Drive in. Get police car performance for your car with Rio Grande Crack Gasoline. Just on the police calling all 
Cars, attention all cars. The cancellation broadcast 101 regarding a murder. The sex in this case now in testing. That's all. Rolls and folks. <laughs> Subject Lindsley, 